respond to your cry if it's a cry of faith. Word of God comes to release faith in you. Okay, we're going to read from verse 5. I'm going to read from verse 3, chapter 7, verse 3. And there were four leprous men at the entering in of the gate, and they said one to another, Why sit still here? And there were four leprous men of there were four leprous men at the entering in of the gate, and they said to one another, Why sit we here until we die? If we say we will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city. We shall there. We shall die there. If we sit still here, we die also. Now therefore come and let us fall into the host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live. If they kill us, we shall but die. And they rose up in the trailer to go into the camp of the Syrians. And when they came to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man there, for the Lord had made the horse of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots and a noise of horses, even the noise of great host. And they said one to another, Lord, the king of Israel has hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the king of the Egyptians to come upon us. Wherefore they arose and fled in the twilight and led their tents and their horses and their asses even the camp as it was fled for their life. And when the lepers came to the uttermost part of the camp, they went and to one tent and did eat and drink and carried things, silver and gold and raiment and went and hid it and came again and entered into another tent and carried things and went hid it. Then they said one to another, we do not well this day. We do not we do not well this day is a day of good tidings and we hold our peace if we tarry till morning light some mischief will come upon us now therefore come that we may go and tell the king's household father bless this word in jesus mighty name amen can i have this moment closer to me thank you can you hear me if you can hear me say amen can you hear me Hallelujah. We're going to study the word of God. Uh, and Come on, young lady. Get close to the anointing. Why are you hiding? God bless you. Amen. We're going to study the word of God. We're going to go deep into the scripture and uh, see what God is talking about. Now, you got to realize that the lepers were fed up and they were tired of waiting. And they knew that if they stayed in the city, at the city gate with the they would die of hunger because the city was ran out of food. The city ran out of what? Supplies. If you look at verse 1, how many, were le how many leprous were there? Four. Leprous stands for sin. Write it down. Leprous stands for sin. If you have someone to write, write that point down. Leprous stands for sin. Leprous stands for sin. Sin is leprosy. When there is sin in your life, that means there is leprosy. And at the entering of the gate, they said one to another, why sit we until we die? If we say we will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city and we shall die there. Leprosy means sin. Uh, when there is sin, it represents leprosy in the Bible, incurable. There's no cure for leprosy. But God will bring deliverance and salvation to a sinner if they take a step. Uh, if you watch a movie by television, that means you take a step to come out of your sin, and God can cleanse you and deliver you. Now, this man said, if you sit here, we will die. The city was under siege. If we say we will enter into the city, then famine is in the city. Going into the city where they belonged, there was famine. Now you got to remember lepers were dis, 
engaged from mixing with the other people because lepers were considered to be unclean. And uh, they knew if they go into the city, there would be nothing for them to eat. So they, they, they say, if we stay out, we're going to be, you know, stuck here. We die here. We go in, we die. And they knew if they go to the camp of the Syrians, it's easier. Now, therefore, if, they say, if we say we enter the city, then famine is in the city. We shall die there. If we sit here, we die also. Now, therefore, come, let us go. Fall, let us fall into the host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live. If they kill us, we shall but die. What that teaches us that God will not move unless we move. God will not move unless what? We move right down. This year, you have to be willing to risk making decisions, taking an initiative to do things that are completely not common, on common ground. You see, we always look for a comfort zone to operate. We like to be around people that like us, so we feel comfortable. That's my body. That is my namesake. That is my soulmate. That is, we always look for a comfort zone. And the comfort zone becomes a snare because the enemy doesn't mind adding to you in exchange for your effectiveness. You got to remember that hostility could become your wake-up call. They said, if we stay here, we're going to die. It's a comfort zone. We go into the temple, I mean to the city, we're going to die. That is trying to recollect with your past experiences. And they said, if we go to the Syrians, that, they make a very powerful statement here. If they save us alive, we shall live. If they kill us, we shall but die. They said, we'd rather die on the offense than die without doing nothing or dying, staying in our sin. Leprosy, stagnancy put in that place where they're not active. So if you have somebody write, write down these points quickly. The Lord will not move unless you move. God will not move unless what? You move. The Lord will not deliver you unless you take an initiative. You gotta wanna be free to be free. Some people want deliverance to be handed them on a silver platter. So when they come in, they want the preacher to do everything. Well, I'm here. Heal me. They told me, you pray for the sick. I need a miracle. Of course, I'm going to pray for you, but you need to worship. You know, you're just going to sit in your chair and look at me like I'm a Godzilla from the mountain of the jungle, singing for hours. If I'm carrying the power of God and I'm worshiping, then you need to worship too. If you don't worship, then God can't move. Amen? Because you see, this is not mechanism. This is supernatural. Somebody say hallelujah. You know, a baby, when a baby is born, they do what their parents do. The parents run, they run. The parents eat, they eat. They follow their leader. Somebody say hallelujah. So if I'm carrying the power of God and I'm worshiping God, then you're supposed to worship. If I'm praying, you're supposed to pray. If I shout, you shout. Paul says, follow me as I follow who? Christ. So some people want to be healed in what I call a remote control. You grab a remote and you press the button. Bang! You buzz them. Receive an eardrum. Bang! Bang! Hair grow. Bang! Bang! Receive new teeth. Bang! No. The Lord doesn't operate like that. If there's lepers had chosen to go back in the city, they would have died. If these lepers had chosen to stay at the gate, they would have died. God will not move in lives of people that do not make decisions. You know, one of the demons that attacks believers is indecision, not making decisions, not willing to take an initiative, wanting everything to be handed to them on a silver platter. God will not move. In a situation like that, God will move in a situation whereby you're willing to take the initiative. Now, we do not make things happen, but we take the first step. We take what? 
the first step. When a woman is pregnant, she has to push the baby for the baby to come forth. If she doesn't push the baby, the baby ain't going to come out. And the people said, you have to be willing to take the first step. So if they chose to stay in that state where they were at the gate, they would have died. If they had gone back to their old ways, they would have died. This is my, my, my way of thinking. I don't want to go back to the world because the world has nothing to offer to me. God took me out of the world. A lot of people, they really have that option. Well, I'm in the thing for God. If it doesn't work out, I'm going back to my old ways. Forget it. You need to go now. Don't wait until tomorrow. This is the time for you to quit. Quit now, give up, put your arm down, and go back to the world. If you have that mindset that says, well, I'm in for it. If it doesn't work, I'm out. Then it's better for you to quit now because it's never going to work for you. Faith doesn't operate like that. Somebody say hallelujah. You, if you're going to follow Christ, you must deny yourself. You must what? Deny yourself. You see, the, when Americans went to invade Europe to drive out Hitler, they had to destroy the boats because they know we cannot go back to America. We either drive Hitler out of Europe or, you know, we die. They drive us back to the ocean. No boats. So you can't come to God with an option of going back to the world. Ever say, it's never going to happen in the name of Jesus. Not by my power, but by the Holy Ghost. So you can't have the initiative to go back to the world. You can't go back to the world. You see, most people that think they're born again by the end. I'm going to tell you why. Because they're not really in love with the Lord and they don't even know who the Lord is. Okay, if a pagan walks to you and asks you, who's Jesus, what are you going to tell him? Well, he's the Savior. Savior of what? What has the Lord done for you? So instead of you talking about what he has done for other people, start by talking about what has the Lord done for you. Do you know the Lord personally? One of the women that wrote a book called uh, Heaven is Real, she shares in a book how she saw her mother burn in hell and there's nothing she could do to save her. Because the Lord said, if they don't know me, I don't know them. No future. So you got to remember this. This is real business. In God's kingdom, no mama, no papa. It's you and the Lord. No sister, no brother. It's personal. Somebody say, man, if you made up your mind to follow Christ, you do not do it for the crowds. You see, when I stand here to worship, my audience is not you. My audience is the Lord. Jesus is my number one audience. If he's not happy, I'm not happy. 